Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. It's me, Vanilla Soup, and today I'm really excited to kind of do a deep dive into the Halo Infinite campaign gameplay reveal trailer. Uh, there's a lot to dissect here. I wanted to make this video almost as soon as it came out, but I decided to, to kind of take a step back to kind of evaluate what my thoughts were, you know, try and see if the hype was you know, controlling my mind at all, so to speak, or, you know, influencing, influencing what I saw. So I really wanted to kind of give it some room to breathe and then come back to it a few days later. And that, that way we could talk about it. So today the idea is that we're going to go into a deep dive of the gameplay trailer, you know, see what I saw in a, in a new light or maybe things that I picked up on as I rewatched the trailer. And then I could share it with you guys. Um, so definitely if I miss anything, let me know in the comments, you know, let me know, Hey, this is from that, or Hey, this is what that meant or, or whatever. Just let me know in the comment section down below. I tried to avoid watching anyone else's videos on this topic. I really wanted to kind of keep it pure to myself and, and not be influenced by others' opinions because, you know, I, I, I want to be authentic with you guys. I want to show you guys my exact feelings on things and I would hate for anything if anything, I just hate for for me to come across like I'm just copying someone else. But before we get started, I do want to make sure that you guys know that I have moved my live streams from YouTube over to Twitch. It's just a really good move for the channel as a whole, and we've already seen a lot of good patterns and a lot of growth on the channel because of it. So if you're not already following my Twitch channel, go ahead and click the link in the description below and make sure you're following over there as well. But with that out of the way, let's get into the trailer here. Um, I'm really excited, first of all, with this opening scene right here. I love the visuals that they're they're giving us here. Um, this blue light coming out of the rings, it sort of, to me, looks like we're going to be using this for like a travel mechanic of some sort. Maybe fast travel, maybe traveling from different worlds. I guess that's still technically fast travel. But we saw these rings in, for at first in the 2018 trailer. Um, and that was, you know, kind of obscure. But I think the reason they keep bringing this back is because this is going to be a big part of the game. I think whether we're traveling to and fro on this ring, or maybe this takes us from the ring to, I don't know, the arc or, you know, somewhere else, you know, like it would just be really cool to see this maybe come into play a little bit of Stargate vibes. I'm not going to lie, but, um, overall, I think the aesthetic here is really pleasing. It's a super solid design. The music here also is just it's just hitting, dude. It, it's it, it it works for me. They're looking good. I, I just gotta say that right away. Um, I know I have the internet exists, so as much as I've tried to stay away from others' opinions, like it still creeps, you know. Um, but overall, their designs look super good. Uh, <laughs> Chief, we knew about Brohammer, we knew about, but seeing them in a different light and a different situation, it looks really good. Here's the gameplay. I want to get moving onto this. Um, because this is what we're all here for, right? This is, we get to see the ring in all of its glory right off the bat. Um, and that's just something you love to see. The wildlife is really cool. I like how dynamic it is. You'll see it throughout the trailer and I won't point out every time, I promise. But like the ferrets that we just saw on the ground and then you'll see some birds up here in the corner. Um, I like how dynamic that is. It kind of reminds me of what they were showing off in that first 2018 trailer. Really important that I think they have that in the game because it kind of adds more life to the world. Just a, to me, it's a nice touch. The smoke off the grunts, the blue blood, really nice. Also, something I want to really, just a small detail that I think a lot of people are overlooking here uh, that kind of shows off the visual prowess of this game uh, because there are some, oh, this is a perfect shot for it. This, like the fingerprints on on the uh, on the assault rifles uh, counter here, just it's super that like you can even see the detail like on down onto the logo the unsc logo here i just think that's a super solid touch to have all this detail even on this like the smallest part because let's be real that part is, of the gun is going to be in your face for a large portion of the game the assault rifle is kind of the tried and true halo weapon next to the magnum um which we'll get to in a few minutes sprinting that's a big thing i remember when i was watching reacting to the trailer right he starts sprinting here I didn't notice this. I was just so think. I was thinking about that Wraith still. I was thinking about the Halo Ring. I was thinking about the grunts that just died because that was cool. I didn't even notice that he was sprinting here. And I know that's something that a lot of people were kind of up in arms about. They didn't want, they don't want sprint to return. I like sprint in Halo. I, it just has to be used right. You know, I, I'm very much on the side of like, I like sprint, but if they took it away, honestly, I still wouldn't care because I see pluses and I see advantages and disadvantages to having and to not having sprint. 
really it's just it's just it is what it is at that point i don't, I don't really care either way uh and then he gets in the warthog warthog looks good it sounds good new warthog sound that's a big thing right the, the new warthog sound um i think it sounds good i don't know why they felt like they had to change it though um right there when he's sliding it sounded more like a classic warthog so again I, I i just don't know why they made the change though i will say this i chalk a lot of the stuff that may be like audio issues or maybe texture issues could be due to just the difficulties of a of, of a stream that was compressed and uh, COVID, you know, like a lot of those things could happen and you never know really what goes on behind the scenes. And by no means am I trying to defend a multi-million dollar company here when I say this, but we really just don't know what happened behind the scenes. So I, and I know I've heard a couple people complain about the visuals, but overall, like I, we don't know what's happening. I think the visuals are stunning. Like this shot right here. <sighs> Come on, dude. <laughs> that looks, it just looks beautiful. It, it looks absolutely beautiful. And then we get to this part, right? We get to the, the first map that reveals all of our speculation was accurate, that it's going to be an open world game. Um, how open world? We don't really know the full extent. I've heard some people talking about from interviews from the developers that it's going to be like a Breath of the Wild situation where if you see it, you can go there. But yet yeah, it's still going to maintain the classic structure, mission structure of Halo games of, of the past. So I don't really know, like... How that works. There's a lot to dissect though in this screen, so I really want to pause it at a good moment. Okay, so we see the the the, the AA guns, so the east, north, and west guns. Um, we already talked about that, but here's something that I find really interesting. Right, we're so used we're, we're so used to to having uh, uh, easy, normal, heroic, or legendary difficulty, but it looks like in this game they're they're getting rid of that and applying them more to different sorts of quests or different sorts of missions in the game right so it's not like your your whole game is going to be a legendary run um it looks like the game is one difficulty but certain things are harder to do right so like this mission is is a normal mission uh and then maybe missions we'll see down the road are a legendary mission they're super hard they're not mandatory by any means probably but hey maybe they are maybe they're a late game you know test your stuff you have to get through it um, how I feel about that though, I, I'd have to see it in practice if that's the case, because honestly, I would hate to see the, pa the scaling of your difficulty of choice be done in this, in this way without a reason, you know, like if it's a good reason or, or even better yet, maybe you just pick and this thought is honestly just coming to me while I'm, while I'm making this too. What if they just made it where you selected, all right, I'm doing, I want to do a legendary run of this game. Everything's going to be super hard. And then within that, they have missions of difficulty, right? Because there are missions on legendary, let's be honest, where there's more jackal snipers than there is the other one, right? Like certain difficulties exist within those, those, uh, those mantras, I guess you could say. So I think that's possible. I, I really think that's probably what they would do. That's what I would do at least. <laughs> but yeah, you get to see the, the, the different waypoints that you can set, um, up here also right quick you can see some other little beacons it looks like blue is going to be friendly uh waypoints so maybe like some marines or odsts that have landed hey other spartans maybe shooting at him i, I also i love that the grunts actually like sound like grunts i think you'll you, if you watch my reaction you know i said that a lot of like this looks like this and it's like elites look like elites because that's a really big deal. Like Halo 4 and Halo 5 were a huge departure on art style. And to see it kind of go back to like older uh, designs for a lot of the alien aliens that were in the Covenant. It's a really big deal. Uh, especially to those of us who have noticed that like, how, like how do you how do you make a, an elite into a troll? You know, like how, do, how does that work? <laughs> um, that blue smoke that popped up. That was really cool. I just love that shot right here. Just all that blue all that beauty bl blue blood and blue balls <laughs> what can i say <laughs> oh that's the that's the magnum by the way or the sidekick right um we don't know if that's replacing the magnum entirely i don't think i mean it's potentially it potentially is but if it's going open world i imagine that there's a lot of opportunities to have different weapons you know different different options um but yeah so like this is, this is what i'm talking about the elite actually looks like an elite he performs like an elite which honestly to be fair the, the elites always had you know their their dynamic right they evade really well 
but kind of getting up a close-up, you see the mandibles actually stretch out further, unlike in Halo 4 and Halo 5, where they're much shorter, um, and, and granted, we don't get an HD shot here, except from this, <laughs> when he's when he's down for the count, um, but very sleek, very thin looking, kind of like how elites should be, they're very agile, they were meant to be modeled after Xenomorphs in, in the Alien series, there's supposed to be an intimidating, nimble threat like that, so... To see that return to form, so to speak, is is really, really welcome. Also, this new gun, the Commando, I believe. Yeah, the VKZ8 Commando. It's like the heavy assault rifle. Um, I personally think this design, while well, it's good, but the design and the way it performs, I think this gun is going to be replacing the Saw. Uh, if you remember the Saw from, 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 from previous Halo games, it was a very, very high caliber round that shot very fast. Uh, very good gun in my opinion, but I think this kind of is similar enough to where it takes a slot where it where it shoots fully automatic and a, and a really devastating blow with each bullet. It doesn't shoot as fast, but I think the weight of it is actually really satisfying to see. I like it. I want to play it to see what you know what it feels like. Okay, so this is something that <laughs> this this is a part that I was kind of uh huh about when I first saw it. Um. The Brutes here drop down and drop pods, which, okay, very Halo. ODSTs also drop down and drop pods. But, you know, they're not Covenant anymore, right? These guys are banished, right? Their 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 color of choice is red. Um, I instantly thought of the Cabal in Destiny 2. And I'm sure a lot of you guys did too. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure how I felt about that at first. I was like, that's kind of weird that they would go so close in design and then it boils down to two things. One, uh, Bungie made Destiny, right? And 343 was an offshoot of Bungie. So, like, a lot of the people working on Halo today worked on Halo back then with, with the Bungie crew. It's not like all of Bungie just left. A lot of them stayed behind to help grow 343. So, these people that worked for together for the better part of 10 years, uh, having creative similarities, believable. Also... Drop pods were done in Halo before they were done in Destiny. You know, they, they, that's just the fact of them. That just, that's just, that's just, that's the truth. <laughs> um, so, you know, to see, to see this, like, at first I was like, okay, it's kind of, it's a little too similar to my liking, but then I realized, you know, too, it, it, it's, it's a coincidence, really. Like, when it comes down to it, like, it's not, well, it's not a coincidence, right? It's not, it's not at all a coincidence. It's. It's creative similarities, and we and we could trace it back and find out how it started. I love, I love the design. Um, I do like the streaks. Uh, that Tron aesthetic, though, <laughs> no, not quite yet. We'll get to Tron aesthetic, I'm sure later. But, <laughs> but uh, seeing seeing the simplistic design on the armor, he looks just absolutely menacing. You get to see all this. Um, wait, is this now? Now here's my question. No, that's not Craig. This is Craig, right? So we get to see the dynamic. Oh, this is a, this is something really important too. You can see as you're as he's shooting, it's dynamic armor, right? So if you shoot the leg armor, I'll, I'll back it up so you can see it. You're shooting. He's shooting the leg armor. The leg armor falls off. He shoots the shoulders. The shoulders fall off, right? And this is Craig, by the way. Craig, we love you. But again, we see that armor. We see that dynamic armor coming into play. Shoots off the helmet. Shoots off the arms, and then we see the grapple for the first time, which is a big deal. Um, I didn't notice it till later. Again, I was just so enamored with everything I when I first reacted to this trailer, and it was really hard for me to kind of like process everything. But seeing the grapple through to come to come in like that for the first time is a really cool thing. Now I don't know how often that's going to be available. It looks like the cooldown is down here. Um, it looks like that's our little grapple symbol. Um, it looks like, oh yeah, so it looks like a good five to six seconds for a cooldown because it's our, it's recharging pretty quickly. Um, brutes performing like brutes, you know, they're jumping up high. They're, you know, they're, they're overwhelming you with, with just sheer force, honestly. Um, I think right here is when I kind of got choked up. When we come up this elevator, when I reacted, this is where I got choked up because then you're like, oh, the halo theme with, oh. It was just look. It was. It looked and sounded so good. Okay, this is this is something I I, I gotta point out. Um, this grunt is just he's my hero. You know, 
he's he's doing one for the team. He knows he's. We've always seen Grunt's suicide mission with two plasma grenades, but have you seen them do it from the sky? <laughs> they fly now, am I right? <laughs> also, this new gun, the Ravenger. I can't believe I haven't talked about this yet. The Ravenger looks awesome, by the way. It looks like a, a beefed up plasma rifle. Um, also, right here, okay, so this is something I was really worried about that wouldn't return in, in Halo Infinite that I love about Halo 5 is the grappling mechanics, actually. Or, sorry, the cr the, the clambering mechanics, not the grappling. Um, the, cra the grappling is new. <laughs> but anyways, the lining up to, the, uh, to, to get that little edge is actually something that I really like. The clambering action right here, I thought it was going to go away, but cl seeing clambering come back right there it's just it's nice you know especially in a, in a game that's going to be encouraging us to explore having the grapple and the clamber actions available to us it's going to be really nice to have both um yeah okay this is another gun that i thought was really cool the plasma uh the or sorry not the plasma rifle but the uh the pulse carbine thank you game um the pulse carbine we've seen variants of this over the years um we've seen well, one, we've seen the, the carbine, right? We've seen the, a pulse rifle. We've seen um, the, I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called in Halo 5, but the fully automatic carbine. Um, so we've seen all of this kind of ideas from this gun and other other weapons throughout Halo. Um, here's the cooldown right here. I think that's really cool. It can, you can visually see on your screen uh, just by color alone if you're just watching out of your peripherals you would see this overheat so it's really cool um seeing brutes in blue I, here's the thing right why are they in blue and orange i want to know this because the banished is like mainly a red aesthetic do they just not care about uniform like any uniforms because those other brutes were definitely red does the red just signify that they're higher up in the rankings? These are things that I want to be answered as we go on and as we get up to the reveal. Because the jackals don't at all look like they're following <laughs> following standard protocol. These guys would all be fired in my military. <laughs> just kidding. Well, probably, actually. <laughs> uh, this little scan was really cool, I think, like just to kind of show us at any moment's notice. Okay, where, a little pulse out. Where's your objective? You know, remind yourself, get your bearings, right? And then this is where I first noticed the grapple in, in the trailer. But this is like the third time he's used it now. Uh, I think... <laughs> thoughts on the grapple? I think it's good. I think it's a good addition. I think in a game that's, gonna again, going to be encouraging you to explore. In a game that's going to be open for traversal, a clamber and a grapple are necessary at that point. You know, like something... Maybe not a grapple per se is necessary, but something to help you maneuver. Like think about Breath of the Wild for a second. The, the parachute, the, the, the glider that he gets, is almost cr essential to being able to travel across that world. It just adds a whole new dynamic and a whole new level to that game. And taking that away from Breath of the Wild would seem weird. So I'm sure we're going to get a, a really similar feel when we get our hands on Infinite. is like playing with a grapple, and then we're going to realize, like, how would this be done without this grapple? You know, like, I, I really want to see that. Maybe there's other solutions, too, you know? But I don't see any way how we would have gotten up all over this ledge without that grapple. Um, overall, or also with this gun uh, right here, it kind of looks uh, like a hybrid of, of, a, of a couple guns. But overall, it seems, it seems pretty new. It has the single shot. Or a buck shot because they look like shotgun shells. The, the the gun shots look like shotgun shells. Um, well, maybe not actually. I've never I've, I haven't paused it on the screen. It looks like actually just high caliber rounds. So yeah. And then also right here we're gonna get a look at what we can do with the grapple, which I think is really cool. Picking up this fusion coil, and then just yeet it. Oh. That's going to be so cool to do. It, honestly, like, I can't wait to see that in multiplayer, too. Like, you pick up a fusion coil and then throw it at an opponent. If it's able to be done anyways, ugh, man, it would be really cool. Also, the fire effects on this gun. Holy crap, how is his hand not on fire? <laughs> I just really want to know. <laughs> um, again, I don't know what's going on with the uniforms here. I, I know that's a really weird thing to point out, but I think that'd be important. I, th I think th I think it'd be really important to point out, like, why are they not in banished uniforms? Is there a reason for that? Uh, the turret here is really cool. You can see that the hex. You saw the hex on the uh, on their shield regens, so that was cool to see as well. Um, and then we pick up the new shotgun, the uh, bulldog. I have some thoughts about the bulldog. 
Um, I don't want it to replace our standard tactical shotgun. I would hate it to replace the, sh the shotgun because, one, Halo 5 already departed from the shotgun enough. <laughs> um, I think the, the, the iconicness of Halo 1 through 3 with its shotgun uh, needs to be kept somehow. And I'm sad to see, I, I was sad to see it go, you know, with the neon lights and everything. Overall, at least kept the form. This performs almost completely different, though, than the tactical shotgun, even in Halo 5. It has the drum, uh, drum barrel right here. Um, and then it has the, the grip, or the, the pistol grip, or not the pistol grip, the uh, forearm grip um, for, the, for the pump action. But also, like, something I really like about this gun at the same time, while well, I've said a, a couple things that are negative about it. I think it's gonna be really devastating for a long uh, mid-range shotgun. I think that'll be really cool. Maybe this takes place of the scatter shot. Maybe this doesn't take place of the shotgun. Maybe this takes place of the scatter shot as that mid-range shotgun. Um, yeah, the range on this shotgun is just absolutely insane. Like that was super far. Didn't do. It didn't down him, but two shots did. That's pretty cool. That's pretty crazy. And then grunts, you know, easy to put down. Elites take two shots and 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 a melee to kill with that from that range so maybe it's not as powerful as i once thought but still in order to hit those shots at mid-range it, it's it's pretty decent if I'll, t I'll say this if this is next to the tactical shotgun i'm happy if this replaces the tactical shotgun i'm not so happy i'll be honest with you i'll be sad like why change things for just changing sake that's actually a conversation I had with my brother about this because at first I was like, I don't see why they don't change it, why they shouldn't change it. And then I got thinking about something he said is like, why would you change something just to change it? Like, why fix something that's not broke, right? Um, yeah, like that, that's a good point. And it got me thinking like, yeah, like why, why should, um, why should they take out the tactical shotgun to put this one in? Like, what's the reason, you know, that's what I want to know. Is there a gameplay element that requires this shotgun? If not, why did we change it? Um, going up here into this, into this, uh, I believe we're in the turret. Um, and then we see this little, we, we go into a cutscene, right? We go, we go into the visuals of the tra of the, the visual end of the trailer. And then here's our, our, our big bad that we know of so far for this game. Atriox, we haven't seen, we've only heard of Atriox. And if you know, if you know me on my videos before, I don't want Atriox to be in this game. I want Atriox to be held off. I, I want Atriox to be a huge threat. And if he's in this game, at the very end, please don't let him. The, like, Eshiram, I think is his name, right? I think that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. Um, and if I'm pronouncing it wrong, maybe I'm thinking of something else. But I'm pretty sure they said his name was Eshiram. Um, but definitely let me know in the comments down below if I'm, if I'm getting that wrong. I think he looks super good. I think he looks crazy. And this is something that actually, again, I'm going to talk about here soon on... Um, on Thursday's video, but you see infinity right here, right? When I was watching the trailer, I didn't even pay attention to the names. I just saw infinity right in my face. And I was like, Oh my gosh, don't tell me the infinity has gone. Right. And I like this happens, right? It turns red and they're all deceased. And I was like, Oh my gosh, the infinity has gone. It, it's, it's dead. It's dead. Um, but if you take a little closer look, like I said, they're all named infinity, but even closer, you see some UNSC symbols. Uh, you see some Oni symbols right here. I saw an, Oh, here's an ODST symbol. What I think these actually are, are ID tags for members of the infinity. Maybe the infinity did blow up. Maybe there was a lifeboat that got away with some main characters or a couple lifeboats. But I think these are the are what we're looking at as far as the people that were actually in the Infinity. Um, and after Halo 5, the Infinity was pretty much all humanity had for the UNSC that was avoiding Cortana, right? Um, which leads to a couple other theories that I'll get into in another video. But again, I, I want to go like really in-depth with this on a video soon. I don't want to talk about it all because we could talk about this for hours. So stay tuned for a later video about how I feel about this shot in particular. Um, just know for right now, I think it's really important to note that I don't think that that th this means that the Infinity crew is all gone. I think everyone that was fighting at this battle is pretty much gone except for like Echo 216 that was in this Pelican and then Chief was out there. And I think those are, of this particular battle, I think that's all that was left, right? Before we wrap up this video, we get to a, another trailer that came out not even moments later after the, uh, Spartan. 
after that trailer review after that trailer happened right after the event, xbox event happened we got this trailer that dropped too um overall it's more or less what we saw in that last minute or so of gameplay but there's a couple cool things like this the energy sword <laughs> seeing the energy sword um is really good i i think the design looks real like as it should be you know it looks good i don't <laughs> I don't like the sound though. I don't know why they stopped using the classic Halo Halo plasma sword sound. They did it. They did the change in Halo Two Anniversary, and I almost switch back to reg to the original graphics almost every time I have the energy sword because I love hearing that sound. It is just so iconic. I, I hate saying the word iconic because you know what does that even mean? Also, that line right there, the covenant or humanity calls you their savior, covenant, uh, the demon. And then he says, the banished call you prey. What a way to make Chief piss his pants, right? <laughs> I want to get to one more gun. And I'm sure if you're still watching this video, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's going to be... Oh, there it is. The the battle rifle going... This is another thing. They, they must know that we like the classic battle rifle design because they went back to a more Halo 2 battle rifle design. I mean, it looks great. It looks just as it should be. And I'm, I'm really happy about that, you know? I, I'm really happy that they decided to go to this design because I I like the Halo 4 and 5 de battle rifle designs, but it's still not this design, right? And I, I think I think they knew that fans felt that way, and so I'm glad they changed it. But that's it for this video, guys. I know it's a little bit of a longer one, but I felt like it was necessary to kind of give my overall impressions as we slow down, as we come out of everything. What can I say, though? I'm hyped. I, I'm so hyped for this game. You can pause any frame and find something you don't like, but you can find a million things that you do like, right? So I don't. I, I choose not to let the one thing that I don't care for outweigh the millions of things I do like for. I just don't think that's a rational way for me to to think, um, you know. And I respect people people's opinions if they feel differently. I really do, but that's just me. I I've said it before. I unapologetically love all of the halo games i i love them all to pieces sure there's again there's things i dislike but overall i love them all but that is going to do it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed this deep dive breakdown if you did leave a thumbs up on the video and if you're new definitely consider subscribing we do all sorts of halo content here now um but yeah again just thank you so much for watching and until next time i'll see you online vanilla soup out